This chapter is about the warp modifier, and if any of you are, have used proportional editing before, then you probably know what the warp modifier does in principle. For example, if I select this vertex, I can then choose connected or proportional editing and enable it. And uh, you can see that it forms a sphere around my vertex and has a fall off that I can determine uh, in order to transform the vertices next to it. And uh, you can see there's a similar uh, certain types of fall off. This is constant, so every um, so every vertex in the radius gets pulled up. You can have uh, random in order to make like ant hills or something, and you can have the others. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Now the warp modifier is something that enables you to do the proportional editing without changing your mesh. So um, if you want to make changes later on, you can just you can do so at any time. So I've inserted two empties, one on the left, one on the right. So I choose from and to those two empties. And you can see this is empty, so this is the left one from to the empty number two. So that means it's sort of a um, projection or, well, a warp from the first empty to the second. So um, the first em the position of the first empty will determine the position which vertices are influenced and the position of the second empty will determine the direction of where those vertices are taken to. There you can see it. The origin is where the first empty is and the direction is where the second empty is. Okay. So, um, for a modification of this modifier, you can choose a couple of different settings. First of all is preserve volume. That I think is more for uh, more irregular meshes because with the cubes and the stuff I tested out there was no difference. And the strength of course. And the affected radius the radius of this. You can have the same fall off as you can choose um, down here except for random. I think you can choose random here. Yeah, let's check. F uh, choose sharp fall off and uh, increase the strength again and the radius. There we go. Okay, we have the sharp fall off and the reason it's not that sharp is because of the subdivision. If this was subdivided more it would be would look sharper but also it would be slower. Then you can choose a texture to distort your warp as you can see over here. This is what I did with the um, let me just uh, change the places of the ver of the empties. Okay. This is to distort the falloff. So uh, actually this is quite similar to the random method that you can select down here. You can choose a texture to do so. Okay, so um, there's uh, one more option and this is this one. You can change choose the texture coordinate input and um, if you have for example painted on this or have some uh, writing on that and that writing is projected with a UV map. You can then, you can then, for example, use this writing as an offset and uh, also parent the direction to an empty. Hope that makes sense. The other thing is, of course, this is the same as with the displacement modifier. So, if you're interested in how those coordinates work exactly, then check the displacement modifier tutorial. It's on the right. And um, one more thing is, th if you rotate these empties, it will sort of rotate your offset as well. So I'm going to increase the strength so we can see it better. If I now rotate this, you can see how this mountain or this hill I created gets kind of swooshed. And also, the um, you can only uh, set the strength for both empties at the same time. But if you scale them, you can increase the strength of this empty or you can increase or decrease the strength of this empty. So this is uh, so this way you have excuse me this way ha you have a bit more manual control over what you're doing while you're warping the uh, your objects and I guess if you remove the texture and 
would uh, reset these two scalings and then decrease the strength, something like that. Make the fall of uh, smooth sphere or smooth. Okay. And if you've seen Bugs Bunny cartoons lately, there you go. This is how they made that bunny crawling under the earth. So, okay, this is how Bugs Bunny makes its tunnels. Um, I guess that's it about the warp modifier. There is one more thing. And uh, that is if I delete these lower vertices and if I select everything, press space and type in warp, then you can see it's warping my object around the 3D cursor. This unfortunately has nothing to do with the warp modifier because I was actually kind of looking forward to it because this option is a bit tedious and if you make a mistake then you have to start over while with the warp modifier I was hoping that this would exactly do this. So with the W depending on how you're looking you can make a sphere out of a plane like this but that's not how the warp modifier works so two different things just for completeness sake this is how you warp a sphere around a plane